Hi, this is Jen with Rosen Collection. I am going to go over the dime sticky hoop. I have a baby lot brother uh, type hoop that has the two prongs to snap into. Uh, what is great about using a sticky stabilizer is things like doing a knit hat and putting embroidery on that. Uh, otherwise you'd be trying to you know hoop that it would crunch this and stretch it too much this way you can get it just the right tension and embroider on that so I have my hoop the sticky hoop this is the dime sticky hoop stabilizer uh, it does come with some sample pages of it uh, quite a generous amount as well uh, this has a textured side and then a shiny smooth side. The textured side is the stabilizer. How I like to do it is remove the hoop from the area and I peel back the adhesive backing here. Uh, not a good day to cut my nails. And then Peel that back and this is the stabilizer with the sticky side and I actually just peel that back and lay that down and to get a nice smooth surface I just lay my hoop down right on top of that and press down and then I even go back through and go underneath I did not line that up the best as I could have but I think it'll be okay. Uh, it still did make contact with the metal. Uh, probably not the best idea to peel that back off just because of the risk it might tear. Uh, but it is pretty, pretty tight on there even with that. So with placing an object on there such as a hat this is a ponytail hat I got from a local shop here and I'm just going to go ahead and pull that back and place that down. I have a little bit of tension on it just because when it is on your head it's not all the way there. Uh, it might even be best to do this while it's on the machine itself so you don't bump or move it. Uh, but this way you can make sure it's nice and straight, you can reposition it where you need to uh, and the rest of this you can use to smooth out the area and I will demonstrate that on the machine so let me pull the machine out okay so I have my brother PE 800 here all ready to go I picked out three colors that I am going to use um, I'm going to do a compass on this hat and what I will do is I will pop this off for a minute here and show you how to set this up. So it's just like any other hoop that you have for the brother. Uh, pull that tab back and have those latches go down. And sometimes I have to wiggle it a little bit, but it does lock in there underneath this tab. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So there is a tab here. And this piece does go down below that. Um, if you don't, you do get inconsistent stitches with that because it moves slightly. So you don't have the accuracy that you would normally have. So, and then what I will do is I will pull up my design here. Um, I will do that just because it's going to move the hoop on me again. And then when I pull it up, I need to either get another drive or clear off some of this stuff here. And then you go ahead and kind of resize it here. I don't want a three inch compass on there, so I'm going to shrink it down.
think it'll only let me shrink it down that much. Uh, this is a design from OESD. Uh, it was a part of the Spree Club and got a whole bunch of designs. And I thought it would be cute on this hat to have a purple compass. And so I will go ahead and line that up again. You don't need to have it underneath there because it will get bunched up here. And then just have it stretched out just slightly. And then walk it out, trying to keep that same tension all the way up on the design. And straightness. Uh, this being a knit hat, it is a little more challenging here. Uh, if it wasn't a knit hat and it was something flat, uh, I do recommend trying to place it as much as you can on a tabletop surface just because this hoop is hanging off of the back of the machine. And I am going to pause this, pop this drive out and make it probably about two inches. It's only letting me shrink it down uh, to a certain percentage, so I'm not happy with that. I should have checked that before. So let me get right back to you. Okay, I am back here. Now I have my two inch size compass here. Uh, again, I didn't want something too big just because it will itch my head. Um, so, just making sure that that is kind of an in-between tension so you don't want too much. Um, so, what I have done here is really try to make it straight uh, from side to side here. And you can hold it down kind of in place so it doesn't snag to see where it's going to lie. And then I'll hit OK on my machine here. And then the embroidery feature. OK, so I had to look up how to do a basting stitch on this machine. Uh, it turns out I am used to a multi-needle uh, where there is a simple button to push to do a basting stitch. Uh, so this you have to go in and select the size and shape that you want to do. Um, being that this is a knit, I am going to do topping on here as well, uh, which I will hold down while it is doing its basting stitch as well. So I'm going to pop that open right now. I always go a little extra generous with the water soluble stabilizer here. Um, slide that underneath my foot here just to make sure all those stitches stay where I want them and hold that all down so I am going to go ahead and hit end edit and embroidery and I am needing to make sure this does this one first Okay, now I'm having more problems with the basting stitch. Hold on one moment. All right, I thought I knew this machine pretty well. Apparently I need to rest up on some of this. So this is my first time doing the basting stitch on this machine, like I said. So uh, the biggest thing is making sure that the rest of this hat is not going to get sucked in the bottom. Again, just kind of walking it out and making sure nothing else is underneath there. And so I am going to hit OK. I went ahead and fast forward to the stitches uh, just for time's sake here. And it's probably going to be too small, so a little pain for me to get out, but I will work on that. So I am going to go ahead and put my foot down and get that going. So I am holding this out here. Doing a nice basting stitch around 
to make sure it's not going to move. So now, it says that it's done. I'm actually going to go back and remove this just to make sure it doesn't do that. So I'm going to hit end edit and get going on my actual embroidery design. I do like to sit and just make sure that there's no snags or issues, like there's a thread here. So I'm going to go ahead and pause that and grab some scissors. Um, scissors are never where I need them, but this will be just fine. So I just don't want this thread to get caught underneath there because sometimes it makes a bigger mess than what it's worth. So there we go. And so I go ahead and continue with that. And I will let this go here. And the uh, sewing mat that I have this on is supposed to help the noise reduction. My daughter is actually in the other room sleeping next to me, uh, so it doesn't transfer through the floor as bad, and it helps the electronics so they aren't getting vibrated as badly as it could be. Um, again, Sewing Machine Plus is the only ones that I know of that have this material on this mouse pad type. So it helps the machine from sliding, uh, noise reduction, helps the electronics. Uh, I use it also from work from home as well as a desktop cover. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and take a peek and make sure that it's doing okay here. Looking to do okay. It is getting ready to wrap up the first color here, so I'm going to go ahead and stop you and get back to you with the next color. All right, that turned out just fine. And go ahead and start the next color here. This is in another three minutes. And something is going on with my thread, so let me take a look at that. Needle up. This has nothing to do with this machine, and I do not know where my little puller is, this is all I got. So, kind of looks like it never got started quite right, or is pulling another thread around from the start. So I am going to go ahead, and this is you know, part of embroidery where you got to sit and watch it. And so I'm not quite sure what happened here. So I do try to like I said, make sure all the threads don't get caught underneath stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and redo that. This does have an automatic threader. Not so much automatic, but definitely helps. You just put it through and it lines up with the needle. And I am going to go back the full amount of stitches to the beginning. Just because I am not sure what happened here. And there we go. Start that one. And you know what? I'm starting to think maybe that 
that didn't thread right. I think it might have pulled out. thread tail here so I'm gonna go in and cut that and I really need to get my other scissors and continue on with that so I am gonna pause you for a minute while this uh, gets going here it is doing some fine stitching in there let me zoom in a little bit for you Not a very good view, but the stabilizer's still tacked down, but it is starting to fill up a little bit. So I'm going to pause it and let it finish up these last couple minutes, and then we'll go to the last color, and we'll get the result. Alright, so while it was on the second color, uh, it did cut through on this water soluble stabilizer so I am cutting away so the foot doesn't get caught in it. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and update that and continue here. Shouldn't have too much longer so I will keep this going. Again to remember to like, share, subscribe ask any questions, comments, concerns, if you know of a, a different way than I'm doing, let me know and I can give that a go as well. I probably should have went with a solid item instead of something a little more dainty and delicate but we will see how it turns out I think it's actually turning out pretty well so we are on the last color and clip that pull the remainder out Head to do this last color change here thread. Go ahead and put the foot down and start it up. And it does have that thread tail again. Um, so I'm going to have to let that go just a little bit out of the way so I can get to that. Uh, I did grab my Tula Pink duckbill scissors. Uh, I do like this because it tends to get where I need it to. Except in this case, let's see, there we go, I did get that. Uh, but the duckbill scissors are quite nice. Uh, they are made for applique. Uh, so it actually brings the item up to be able to cut it. Uh, so the edge is up and this one as well. So it still does that nice scissor look to it. And this machine does not cut the uh, jump stitches, so I do have to go back and cut those. Uh, with the higher end machines, it does cut the jump stitches. And we are just about done here. That is 
is all done here. So I am going to go ahead and lift my presser foot, wait for the red there, and back out of that so my arm moves out of the way. And I'm going to check and make sure Oop. So I am moving that out a little bit. And we'll go ahead and pull that from behind. So just to show you, the rest of that hat was never attached on there. And there is what the back side looks like. And here's what the front looks like with all the washable stabilizer. So I'm going to go ahead and peel back this here. Sorry. And so it does leave a little bit of residue on the thing there. So with this, I am actually going to go ahead and cut away this. Clean this up. Just so I can actually see these. Some, uh, like I said, this is the first time I've done the basting stitch on this particular machine. Uh, most of the time it's a lot further apart, so this is a little tricky here. Seam Ripper does work a little better, um, but I am set up to work from home tomorrow, so I have kind of shuffled everything around. most of that off of there. I do like to remove that basting stitch while this is still on just because it does make it a lot easier to see especially on a dark fabric. Um, and I know this is a knit cap so the embroidery is going to be on the face. I do have some iron on that will help protect that and make it a little softer. I uh, will use on onesies for the little ones against their soft skin. And so now I'm going to be trimming off these jump stitches. Hope I'm not too far out of frame. Still see some of these threads from that. And this knit does make it a little harder. A fleece hat would probably be a lot better to actually put embroidery on. But I was really liking the style of hat. And kind of like the little compass there. And so there we go. So 
just a little bit of something on the hat instead of just a plain plain hat here. Let me see if I can get some better lighting on it. And let's see here. Here we go. So it's just a simple little compass here. Um, like I said, I probably should have done something a little more substantial. Uh, maybe done an applique behind this. Um, but I think it just adds a little bit of something again so you can feel where the ponytail spots are. Uh, but that is a little uh, basic introduction on how to use the dime sticky hoops. And if you have any questions, comments, uh, let me know in the comments below. Remember to like, share, subscribe. Thank you. Have a great day.